So this is for all of you people who live on the terminal and die by the SDK, you know. Uh, so this is like extreme developer edition. Um, you know, our goal with Data Hub is always you know, to provide data practitioners with the highest fidelity metadata graph backed by a highly scalable, battle-tested storage and indexing platform. And I've written about this, you know, as when I wrote about the evolution of metadata architectures over the years, based on my personal experience building metadata systems and observing other systems that had, you know, succeeded or not quite succeeded in kind of the, the sphere. Usually you start out with kind of a generation one architecture, probably you hack it over a weekend, start out with pull-based integration, crawl whatever you can get, ingest it into some local DB, and you start getting productive very quickly. Then you realize, well, I have to share it with other people in my team, in my organization, and you move into generation two, a microservice-based architecture with a DB behind it. And then as you really want to scale it out to the entire organization and really want to enable decoupled production and consumption of metadata, you end up going towards what I'd call generation three, which is an event-oriented stream-based architecture with extensible metadata modeling. And that's where Data Hub is right now, right? It has basically evolved over multiple generations to get to kind of this extremely scalable, extremely uh, decoupled way of producing and consuming metadata. Interestingly, one of the consequence of all of this evolution and these technical choices that we've made is that it can feel overly complex to get that first use case off the ground. And you know, we are always looking to make Data Hub easier to use. Um, Data Hub Quick Start is obviously our lightest weight deployment of Data Hub. And as you know, Pedro just shared, we are looking for more and more ways to simplify it and give you the entire Data Hub stack on your laptop, right? We used to have required eight gigs of memory, and now we're like at six gigs. And now with the schema registry going away, we'll probably have to shave off a little bit of that. We're looking to upgrade Kafka, and that will get Zookeeper out of the mix. And you know, that's climbing that hill and making it simpler and easier continuously. Um, and the telemetry tells us that we see routinely, you know, upwards of 400, almost close to 500 quick starts per day that are happening across multiple laptops like Linux and Windows and Mac, which means, you know, we've achieved some amount of scale, some amount of adoption. We've managed to make this small enough that people can run this locally. The Data Hub CLI itself is one of the most highly used Python packages in the world. I mean, in, in, in the top 1%. Um, there's a lot of SDK calls and Ada just shared how she is starting to use um, Data Hub as an SDK and use it to enrich metadata and work with metadata. But you know, we're always looking for opportunities to push this envelope further. And in this space, there have been, you know, in the industry, a lot of attempts to provide metadata at the fingertips of data professionals on the command line. Uh, there were projects like Whale that came up a few years ago, um, and more recently, Recap, that's trying to do exactly that. And as we looked at those attempts, we felt like that was an experiment worth trying for the Data Hub community to provide them with a slimmed down SDK and a CLI experience with metadata that didn't really require them to deploy all of the Data Hub components. As you know, most of the hard parts about metadata, one of the biggest hard parts is the integration complexity of integrating with every single thing known to mankind and then being able to explore that metadata in a lightweight way. So imagine you're a data scientist who's just joined a company and hasn't yet deployed a central data catalog like Data Hub, but you still want to be able to discover and understand data while staying on the command line. Uh, so how can we take advantage of all of these integrations that Data Hub already has? How can we take advantage of the comprehensive metadata model that Data Hub already has, and yet make it really easy and really lightweight to get access to all of this metadata? That was something that we've been noodling on for quite a bit of time, actually. Uh, something that isn't a separate island and still has the ability to connect up with the central Data Hub instance when that becomes available. So if you think about the journey of Data Hub at a company, you might start out in sort of single player mode and then move as you graduate to you know, multiplayer mode where multiple teams are collaborating and um, harnessing all of that metadata for each other. Now, the good news is while this seems very hard, it's actually not, it's not a ton of work. And we were now, uh, we're very excited to actually introduce it as an experimental project for community feedback. and. Um, Harshal, I think, is going to give you a quick tour of this newest addition to the Data Hub SDK. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I think let me share my 
screen and we can kick off a quick a little demo. So first off, what is Data Hub Lite? Um, broadly, the idea was let's build a small embedded version of Data Hub that you can use only from the CLI uh, or primarily from the CLI and um, you know, the data storage basically lives in a DuckDB file on your machine, very quick to, to use and um, work with. And then you can, you know, do exploration based on it. You can write scripts based on it. You can do kind of um, more, more like quick things that you can do without like, uh, without a full, without requiring a full data hub instance. So, it exists right now as a subcommand of data hub. So generally you can initialize it, then you can import some data in. The other thing that you can do is actually if you have existing recipes, you can just set data hub light as the sync and we'll just use the local thing. If you want to both keep a copy of that data locally as well as forward it to an actual running instance of GMS, you can do that as well. So you can basically mirror the metadata between your local and the remote instance. Um, anyway, I've actually already run the ingest script. So we can just actually get to exploring stuff. So we have you know, a like you uh, a file based system where you can kind of explore your metadata. You can say like Snowflake databases, instances, um, and you know look maybe oops, databases. We can you know list the databases that we have in Snowflake. That's pretty cool that we have one right now. And then, you know, maybe um, you can list the schemas within this thing. So similar to what you would want to do is kind of a quick exploration of what do you have in Snowflake? Maybe you're, you know, a new, new employee at a company and you're just trying to explore what metadata or what data you have available to you. It's part of that. Maybe you want to, oops, you want to do a get command and you want to get the, the documentation on the, the analytics schema within here. And so we can do that with just a simple get command. And then it will tell us like, okay, if I want to look at it in SnowSite, here's the link to it. If I want the description, here's what we had annotated on it. And then similarly, I can list the tables within the schema. And, you know, we've got 260 something tables and we can take a peek inside of one of them. Uh, so we're back to pets as the example. And you can see kind of all of the metadata that our connectors already are able to extract just kind of very quickly. But of course, this is a little bit hard to consume because there's a lot of stuff here. So maybe if you want to just get the schema, we have a, a sub command for that. And you know, it tells you here are all the column types. Every single one of them is nullable. And then I can just tax dash dash stats on the end, and I can get some basic summary statistics about what are the minimum, maximum, some sample values, how many things are null, information that you very much need when you're beginning an exploration process with any sort of data. Of course, beyond that, maybe you also want to understand who is using this thing. And so you can run a get command, look at the usage statistics, and then here, you can kind of understand, here's how people query it. 
here's who queries it. Um, and then based on this information, or even, you know, which columns are frequently queried, based on this information, you can then, as your, you know, new data scientist at a company, start building out charts, building out dashboards, building intermediate models based on this information. And you know that it's used by other people, you know who to ask questions to, you can kind of navigate this stuff fairly quickly. Uh, there's a couple other capabilities, things like search across this entire metadata graph that you can also do locally. But really the idea is to test things out. This is an experiment to see kind of what people can actually do with this. And so we're very, very excited to see um, what you build, what you do with this. Um, and so, yeah, excited, excited about this one. So, yeah, that's the, that's the demo.